Tonight's message and service, if anybody wants to try to get down there uh, to the receiving the friends, you may want to get out. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and bring the message that God's put on our hearts out of John chapter 11. St. John chapter 11 down to verse number 38. St. John chapter 11 and verse number 38. We'll be reading three verses here tonight out of this text, in which everyone again knows quite a bit about, but we want to bring the message that God's put on our heart. Entitled, Take Away the Stone. So when you find your place, you may stand on and read God's Word. For those of you that can and will and want to. Reading correctly again, the Bible will say this. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Let us pray, Father. I do now ask that you have you blessed on the reading of thy word. God, I pray that you just do what needs to be done in our lives and in our hearts. And Father, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory again for these things we ask in thy name. Amen and amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Tonight I said I want to take a few moments and preach to you on this thought. Take away the stone. Those are the very words that our mm -hmm. Lord and Savior has mentioned here in our short text in which we have read of a story again that we all know very well of. We're talking about the time period of when Lazarus, which was a friend of Jesus's, was very bad sick, and the sister came to him, Mary came and made haste to him and uh, to the Lord and, and spoke to him about Lazarus, and even told him that he was uh, had, uh, that he was not uh, that he was dying, and the Lord said he had not that he was not dead yet. I don't know about you, but that's about the only way that you can ever be secured of the fact that someone's not dead yet is whenever the Lord says he's not dead yet. Amen? I mean, I don't know about you, and I see someone that's at a funeral home that's laying in a casket, there's pretty good evidence that person's dead. But the Lord said they're not dead yet. There's something to the story there. Amen? So we know that story, and can I say again tonight uh, that uh, this, uh, this, this uh, to some, may be a simple text and a very easy story way of saying something from it, uh, but I indeed believe that it is a very large text, and there is much to be said in this text. Uh, there's no way that I can bring it to its full meaning, and there's no way that I can even attempt to expound upon all of it, but I am willing to attempt just to scrape the tip of the iceberg again tonight and kind of focus in on that one phrase that our Lord had said when he commanded them to take away the stone. I want you to see tonight that this command to remove the stone, that Jesus Christ was in the stone moving business. Amen? Amen. We know that here at Lazarus' grave that this was just a practice of what was yet to come. The main event was yet to come, so to speak. And this was just a practice time when he said, take away the stone. Well, I tell you, it wasn't too long after this period of time, according to the Gospels and the Scripture, if you was to look at it and try to put it in this chronological order, order that our Lord and Savior was going to an old lonely grave himself, uh, and that stone was going to be removed, amen, was going to be taken away. And thank God I'm here to tell you tonight that uh, it's still taken away, amen. That tomb's never been used. That tomb's never been used again since the Lord was in there. It's never been closed up. It's never needed to be closed up. And I'm thankful tonight that our Lord and God is alive and we can go to him anytime we want. But yet, I'm here to tell you, I said he was in the stone moving business. Uh, there's still yet another event that's yet to come when our Father steps out on the clouds uh, or sends the Son to step out on the clouds. Uh, and when the trumpet is blown, uh, folks, there's going to be some earth moving going on again. Uh, and, 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 the, and the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. 
If I, if I do not get the opportunity to go by the rapture, and if I have to go by the grave, folks, I'm here to tell you, them stones on that ground out there is not going to keep me in, even though they might be some would like to get Brother Randy to take a big backhoe and put some big, huge boulders on top of my grave. Them stones are going to be moved one of these days when the Lord comes back and calls us home. And if you're saved more than again today, folks, it'll happen to you too, amen. I said he's in the earth moving business. Hey, hey I, I'm telling you, he's got a big skitster. Amen. I guess that's how you call him things. Uh, he, he can move some stuff with that. But I, I'm here to tell you that that that, 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 that day's are coming, and I'm a looking forward to it. Now, just not only is our Lord in the stone moving business, uh, he just don't remove these stones, but he takes them away. Now, folks, the, the, the phrase of removing something could be that it's just moved over to the side in which we like to picture sometimes uh, at the old uh, over at the tomb uh, when the angels came down and rolled the stone away that they just removed it, uh, meaning that it could be put back. Uh, but folks, I'm here to tell you, when Christ takes away the stone, uh, that word take away means uh, to never to bring back, hallelujah. I'm convinced tonight that Lazarus uh, died again. I believe that he did die again. But I'm here to tell you, he didn't die the same way he did the first time. Glory to God. Folks, I'm here to tell you, I, I, I believe that Lazarus uh, never died the same way twice. Uh, the same as you and I. Uh, listen, we were we died of our sins uh, one way. We don't have to die that way again. Glory to God. It's been taken care of uh, in our lives. God removed the stone uh, of sin in our lives. Uh, he took it away uh, and never for it to come back again. Uh, if you're out there looking for that stone uh, and you want to bring that stone back in your life, uh, that's your fault tonight. Uh, God didn't bring it back to you, nor did he want you to have it back, amen. I believe he took it far, far away. As the old song says, uh, he took it to the depths of the sea, glory to God, uh, to the sea of forgetfulness, amen. I believe that tonight. I believe that you do. I believe you'll get a blessing from that. Uh, I, I said I died once uh, from my sins. I'll die of this body once. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, because I died the first time of my sins, I'll never die again from that. Amen. And I'll live forever and ever according to the scripture. Now that's a blessing tonight. Now listen, we do have stones in our lives uh, that is keeping us from living for Christ. Uh, just kind of, if you would, put a different picture on this message tonight, on this text in which we've read. Uh, we know that it was Lazarus. We know that he had an illness. We know that his illness took his life. And we know that he was in the grave, bound uh, and was dead uh, with grave clothes. Uh, and we know that he was there for four days. Uh, Pretty much a done deal thing. But when Jesus showed up and the stone was taken away, Lazarus come out of there, amen. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And as we say, we know he called him by name because if he would have said, arise, I believe every grave around there would have opened up and they all would have came out of there. Folks, that time's not yet. I said it's a coming. But that day he said, Lazarus, Come forth, uh, and we know the story, but just for a moment, uh, I want you to kind of picture it like this, uh, that Lazarus had a stone in his life uh, that was keeping him from living, uh, not only literally, but for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I believe that Christ was not done with Lazarus. Uh, there was a reason why he wanted to raise him up. Uh, the Bible said uh, it was for the glory of God. Uh, and when Jesus questioned uh, Martha, when she began to grumble, and complain uh, and give excuses uh, why he should not raise Lazarus uh, from the dead uh, and why he should not remove that stone. Uh, folks, he said, if you would only believe, uh, folks, again, I believe that's our biggest problem uh, and the reason why we can't get stones uh, removed out of our lives or taken away in our lives is simply because we don't believe that God can. Now, we know that he will. We know that he's capable, but we don't believe he can. Why? Because we want to hold on to those stones uh, for some crazy odd reason. Uh, I don't know about you, friend. I don't want to hold on to anything in this world that's going to hold me down or it's going to hold me back uh, from serving God. 
You get a stone in your life that that, you, that, that hinders you. Uh, you'll want to get rid of it. Uh, I heard of a man one time. Uh, he called me up, a preacher friend. Uh, he said, brother, I need your prayers. Uh, he said, I've got them kidney stones. Uh, he said, they're about to kill me, brother. He said, I need your prayers. Uh, finally, he got them things out of there. Uh, and he, he called me up and he said, brother, I feel like a new man. Uh, and I said, brother, I said, you ought to count your blessings. Uh, I said, I know of a man that's in the church that I was pastoring at the time. I said, he's in the process right now, passing number 57 in his life. Hey, listen, some, uh, some people have to deal with a lot of stones. And when they come, you don't want them around. You want them things out of there. I'm saying today, we have stones in our lives that keeps us from serving God. They need removing. They need taking away. Never to hinder us again from serving God. The command is for us today to act immediately and don't wait and obey the command to take away the stone so that we can serve God. I noticed in the scripture he did not have to repeat this statement more than one time. I did not see a comma or I see I, I don't see a comma at the end of that phrase. I see a period. In other words, he said Take away the stone, and it's done. Folks, I believe they acted immediately, and they went up there and began to make, take that stone away. Folks, I'm here to tell you that God wants you and I to look deep into our lives, and if we've got stones that's in our lives that's keeping us from serving, keeping us from worshiping, keeping us from loving, keeping us from, uh, from shouting, keeping us from testifying, keeping us from witnessing, those stones immediately needs to be taken away out of our lives. Uh, don't let anybody else uh, keep you from uh, trying to keep it there. I can see on Mark, uh, oh, oh Lord, listen, I know you're able to do all things, uh, but by now he stinketh. Uh, folks, can I say that there's a reason why the devil don't want the stones out of your life? Because he knows you're going to stink up his plan. Amen. He knows uh, you're going to cause a problem. Huh? You might just accidentally stumble across that one that's serving him and tell him about Christ. Uh, and that one gets saved uh, and begins serving the Lord. Uh, you're going to stink up the devil's plan. Uh, that's why he don't want them stones moved. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, it does not matter how many guards uh, he puts around that stone. Uh, when God decides to take it, he's going to take it away. Amen. But I believe you're going to want it. I believe you're going to want it removed. You remember a few weeks back at Easter, I was preaching about those women when they were going up to the tomb and when they were on their way, they began to question about who was going to take away the stone. Folks, I'm telling you, they wanted that stone moved and God removed it. God took it away by the time they got there. In other words, we ourselves sometimes need these stones moved and God will take them away. Amen. Oh, listen now. It, don't let uh, yourself keep those stones there. They're not worth holding on to. Oh, I tell you, I remember one time I picked up a stone. I thought, boy, that stone's a pretty stone. And I picked that thing up and I put it in my pocket and I carried that stone around. And you know what? I found that after a while. That stone began to weigh me down. That stone began to wear out my pocket to, to where I started losing some good sense. Now, don't laugh at that, but I'm saying, I'm saying that stone would become a hindrance to my life, and I didn't need that stone, huh? so I took it out and put it on the shelf, and it's still sitting there today. Listen, folks, uh, I believe we have stones uh, that we want to hold on to, that we want to carry, and if we're not careful, it'll keep us from serving God, it'll keep us from being faithful, it'll bother our lives. We need to get rid of those stones. Can I say in the Scripture now, I see a few things. I see Jesus uh, groaning in himself. The Bible says, uh, Jesus, therefore, again. Uh, I've noticed the word again. Uh, in other words, this ain't the first time. Folks, he's done this before. Uh, he's went through this before. And he's uh, just a few scriptures, uh, just a few verses back. Uh, the Bible even said that he wept. Uh, he wept over this situation. Uh, over the situation, not that Lazarus was dead. Uh, he knew he could take care of that. Uh, he didn't pray. He wasn't weeping over the stone. He knew he could re uh, take away the stone. He was weeping over the unfaithful, uh, the faith of the people. That people 
did not believe. I say he was groaning again within himself and to the, to the point that I said he wept. And folks, I believe today he still weeps over the fact that his children will hold on to stones or let somebody put stones in their lives and keep them back from serving him. It bothers him that he sees his children struggling. I know they tell me, used to back in the mid days of the military, they probably can't do this now, why it would be abuse. But they used to take these old boys, put a backpack on their back, and they would take and put stones in them backpacks. And they'd weigh them down, and they'd take them on a 50 mile truck hike, and make them bear the weight of them stones on their back to condition them. So they can fight the battle, so that when they're out there, they'll not they'll not give down weight, give down under the weight of the battle. But folks, I'm telling you today, the Lord don't want them stones on your back. Why? Because He knows it don't take much to keep you from serving Him. So He wants them stones gone. I said to the point that He even questions our belief. And again, in verse number forty. He said, uh, I, he said uh, I, I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Uh, he said, what's the matter, Martha? You not believe me? What am I telling you? That, that, that I can do this thing. Oh, I tell you, friend, I believe that God can take away the stones. Uh, now, I want to also see, I also see Christians uh, being uh, hindered uh, by the stones. Uh, Death, uh, maybe the death of some loved one uh, has become a stone in someone's life. Uh, and because they lost a loved one, they look at it and they say, I can't serve God uh, like I once did uh, because mama's gone or daddy's gone uh, or, or this one's gone or that one's gone. Uh, friend, I'm here to tell you, don't let the death, the angel, cause a stone to come in your life that you'll not want to serve God. That ought to give you more up to the want to serve the Lord, uh, knowing that your loved one's gone on to be with God, that you'll want to do all you can to serve God so that when you get tired, that God will be proud of you in front of your loved ones. Amen. I say, I believe that Christians are being hindered uh, by, uh, by being away from Christ uh, and the church uh, and God's people. It's become a stone in their life uh, that they, they've let it show up. Uh, and because uh, because they're not there, uh, it hurts uh, and it, they can't get back to church uh, because they feel, feel like, uh, well, they might say something about it, about me. Or they might uh, make a statement to me. Uh, well, they might, they might just judge me. Uh, I found out uh, as I was talking last night uh, I said I found out uh, that there's a lot of people. You don't have to worry about Christians judging people in this world. They judge themselves pretty good. Amen. Uh, they'll bring condemnation, uh, 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 damnation upon themselves uh, by the way they live their lives. Uh, friend, they don't have to have us to judge them. They'll do a pretty good job themselves. I'm saying uh, don't let them stones uh, Come in your life. Uh, Christians are being hindered today. I believe that uh, by, 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 by allowing uh, 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 these stones to come in there and, and, and hinder them. Uh, they need those stones. Take it away. Amen. And then I want to say I see in this scripture those of unbelief uh, and not thinking very straight. Uh, Martha said it's too late. Uh, man, I tell you, she's never said that. I don't believe she's ever said that up to this point. she never seen nothing like this before in her life. And here she is now with the unbelief and her unbelief is causing her not to think. And she opens her mouth and she begins to tell the Lord it's too late. Basically that's what she was saying. She said by now he's thinking he's been gone for four days. It's too late. There's no hope for him. Lord there's no use in doing this. Don't do this. Folks I tell you Sometimes unbelief will call us, cause us to think a strange way. We'll not think like we ought to as Christian people. It's because of those stones uh, that are buried in our lives. Uh, for some today, we may feel that it's too late for God to do anything. It's been too long uh, in our lives. But folks, we might even think that there is no hope. Uh, I'm telling you, you need those stones taken away in your life. Why? Because you're not serving God when you're at this point in your life. Then also see in the scripture, all is done 
for the glory of God. Taking away stones is so that God can get the glory. Amen. It, I want God to get the glory in my life. I, I don't want stones in my life. So I want to try my best uh, to keep these stones uh, out of my life. Can I say, I see just a few stones uh, that hinders a lot of Christians today. Uh, I see stones uh, of stop believing. I, I, you used to believe. Uh, I ask you, what happened? I said, you used to believe, but what happened? You used to believe everything that the preacher said. You used to believe everything that the Bible said. You used to believe everything that you heard at the house of God. But now you begin to question things. Now you begin to try to analyze things and rethink things. I say, what's happened? Oh, there's been a stone that's been rolled away in your, uh, with your unbelief. And I'm telling you, it's blocking you, keeping you from believing. You want to believe. And what does or what do it hinder you? From believing. I think of that eunuch man. He's over there in that chariot. And whenever the man of God came to him and told him about the Lord Jesus Christ and read to him out of the book of Isaiah. And that day, that eunuch man got saved. And now listen, nobody's holding nothing. That eunuch man looked at the man of God and he said, there's a body of water. He said, what hinders me from being baptized? He said, what's going to keep, you know what's keeping some people from doing it? A stone. A stone, afraid they're going to drown. A stone, afraid they're going to get in too deep. A stone that says they're going to have to commit. Oh, I'm telling you, lady, these stones need to be taken away. Amen. I see number two, a stone, a stop service. You used to be faithful. You used to be at church all the time. You used to be there when the doors was open. You used to be there on time. I said, what happened? What happened? Oh, there's been some stone coming your way. You don't, hey, listen, you know you should be there. What stones are in your way? Those stones need to be removed. Number three this morning, or tonight, uh, I see stones of stock followers. Uh, you used to be, uh, be at every event. Uh, used to follow Jesus and his commands. Uh, what happened, I say? What has happened to your life? Uh, why have you stopped uh, did stones come into your life that keeps you from serving the Lord and following God? I say those stones need to be removed. And then number four, I see stones of unstopped sin. Oh, listen now, this is where this is where we get down, get down to the nitty-gritty part. Listen, there's some stones of sin that we have held on to. You know you don't need them. You know that you they don't need to be there. And I believe that your pride has not let them sins go. They won't let you let them go. You want to hold on to them. Those stones may be, be stones of a shame that makes you ashamed of your sin. You need to let God take those stones away in your life. Because I believe those stones, once they're removed, man, you sure can serve God a whole lot better. Amen? Oh, listen to me. I believe that tonight. We need to let go of them stones so that we can get on through. Amen. I'll tell you this now. You might think it's funny, but listen. I remember that one episode of I Love Lucy. No Lucy. Everywhere her and Ricky went, she'd pick up a rock and put it in the camper. Man, since she was collecting them rocks. And old Ricky, they started up across the mountain. And that old camper, man, it stepped, kept them rocks, started sliding to the back of that camper. Next thing you know, that old truck wasn't going nowhere. No, Ricky couldn't figure it out. So Lucy, she was about to have a sweat fit over there. She knew what was going on back there in that trailer. All them rocks was about to take them off the side of the mountain. Ricky couldn't figure out, how am I going to get across this mountain? They finally got out, went back there, got to look around, realized the back of that truck trailer was full of rocks. Ricky started hurling them things out of there. And when he did, that old camper settled down. He got in that truck, he made it across the mountain without a problem. Now listen, that might be a funny story, but you know that's the truth as it is in our lives. We will collect things in our lives like stones, and we don't think they mount to nothing. But after a while, they start dragging us down. We can't get over to the other side. Folks, I don't know about you. I want to get to the other side. We need to get rid of them stones. It's in our life. Amen? Let's take a moment with our heads bowed. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer again.
And I ask you to search your heart diligently. If you have stones in your life that's keeping you from serving the Lord, get rid of those stones tonight. Ask God to take away the stones. And I believe that he will. Father, I do now pray, thy will be done. Lord, if they be any stones in our lives that so easily do beset us, Lord, we do our we do have a great cloud of witness of watching us. We got to keep our testimony. Lord, I say, they may be someone here tonight that has allowed some stones to interfere in their lives. It's got them bogged down. And they can't serve you like they want to. Oh Lord, they're embarrassed because of these things that's come in their lives. I pray tonight, Father, that you take these stones away. Remove them, oh God, to a far sea of of the forgetfulness. Never for them to come back to hinder again so that we can go on and worship you. Lord, I know without a doubt we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. For these things we ask in thy name, amen. God bless you. You are lifted to go.